even helps more. Whoa! <laughs> what the heck was that? Bad driver error. I wasn't realizing how fast I was going. That's durability for you. All right, guys, we're back. Um, haven't been doing too many videos lately. Well, I've been doing videos, but a couple of them are taking me a while to get out. Um, I'm working on those in the background, so they're taking up my time. Weather's extremely hot, so why it is 100 plus degrees outside and we're busy at work, I'm trying to find uh, upgrade projects to come up with. And we have on the bench today the uh, Team Associated Rival MT-8. Now this truck is uh, kind of a little bit of a... Um, I think it's a good platform. I think the design is there, the price is right, but it has a few issues. Uh, main issue is the arms break. They're extremely weak. Now, I have been running it on 4S, um, per, fair, you know, a fair amount of time. I've been running on 4S a fair amount. Um, I haven't broke anything since the weather has got so flipping hot. Um, we're talking 80s, 90s, um, this was 100 this weekend. So pla plastic is a lot more pliable, um, but you can't run things as long. Things overheat, even with the big fans. Um, you gotta be real careful. Your electronics, she'll toast them right up. So anyway, I've been wanting to do some upgrades to this. There is some options out there for a few different things. Uh, the things that break are the arms break the most. I broke a rear hub carrier. I've seen people break the uh, steering rack. Uh, the turnbuckles are definitely, they break. Um, I even think I broke one of these um, outer rod ends here also. But all of this stuff broke in the wintertime, um, back when the vehicle finally was released and it, the weather was fairly cold. And with a lot of my team associated stuff, like the even the MT-10, um, it has a tendency to break parts in the colder weather also. I've almost never broke the MT-10 in the summertime when the weather was above 70. It was always um, in a lot less uh, lower temperature conditions. But I still think the arms are weak. A lot of people still have problems with them. I've seen some people use these. I, these are the um, Red Cat Kaiju arms. You can see they're, they're a lot different looking, a lot less webbing. Um, they are fairly flexible. So the original MT-8 arms are splitting here at the mold seam. That kind of indicates to me there might be a little bit of a molding issue also because it shouldn't be splitting right on the seam. You're wondering if they got the plastics. You know, the mold worked well. Usually when you break an arm, I mean, they'll crack anywhere. Not, not the way these are splitting, but I think Team Associated tried to do their own arms. They're basically the same shape with a little bit more beef to them and it's made them too stiff. So I'm gonna try the Kaiju arms. I think that a lot of other people's had fairly good luck with them. I think some people tried them. Haven't seen too many updates about it. So we're gonna do Red Cat Kaiju arms front and rear. Um, we're gonna do, they came out with a locking servo nut, uh, aluminum to replace the plastic one. This does back off and this will strip over time. And the servo saver is loose, but you can't tighten this too tight. Uh, the nut will split. Um, so they came out with that, I like that feature. Also the aluminum steering rack. Um, I've seen lots of people break these online. And so we're gonna replace that with the factory team's um, rack. Another thing that's gonna be nice is the anti-roll bar set that they released. Seems fairly stiff and this thing does have a fair amount of roll you know kind of when it's so I think this will kind of help a little bit especially with putting a little bit more flexible arm on there we're going to upgrade the servo I've had this for a while and wasn't sure what I was gonna put it in but I think this uh, RT 5012 a high voltage brushless servo probably work pretty good in this truck um, at uh, 7.4 it's 614 ounces um, so it's it's pretty good that's that's not too bad it's all aluminum cased um, metal geared servo and I'm excited to see how that thing's gonna work 
should be pretty fast, should be pretty powerful. We're also going to uh, install Fataba radio system, the T3PV radio. I really like this radio, I've had really good luck with it. This is actually my second one, number two. Um, I do use other brands, I have a Spectrum that I use and a <clears throat> Flysky GT5. And then you have the ready to runs. I don't like ready to runs because this truck is extremely hard to drive when it's on 6S because of the lower end uh, speed controller motor setup. I'm hoping that with the roll bar set, we can tame down a little bit of the, get a little bit better handling a little bit here and there. We'll see how that goes. Um, with nice servo saver, be able to tighten down the nut a little bit more. We're gonna be able to get a little bit more precise control out of the steering, um, which will help with durability because you won't be crashing as much. And then the upgraded radio, I can make adjustments on the radio that will help with the speed controller and different things so we can get a better power band out of this truck. It is, this thing is so fast. You can, you cannot get it up to full speed. I mean, I'm sure some people have, but it's very hard to get it up to full speed on 6S. I mean, this thing is really fast, but it just has this unbelievable power climb where it's just, just extremely fast. So I'm hoping we can tone it down with the radio a little bit, adjust some throttle curve, different things. So we're gonna put it up on the Ernst um, workstation and we're gonna get start uh, removing the arms and replacing the arms first. Okay, we got the MT-8 up on the Ernst stand. Um, I love this Ernst stand, it works really well. I've used it for a lot of vehicles and it works good for the eight skills, especially as long as you have enough room to spin it. Um, it is very durable, it's huge, and it has lots of storage space, so you have plenty of places to store all your stuff. It has magnetic inserts, and I have found that this thing works great for about everything. Okay, so we got the four front arms tore off. Just wanna check the flexibility. I can definitely twist those ones. There's the original team associated. Oh man, those things are like racing arms. I mean, they, look at this. Like this, now. We know that that's gonna affect durability, but when you got a basher, man, those things, this is be made for a track. This is, for bashing, this is crazy. I mean, there is, you would, it is so stiff, the super stiff. So, this should be a worthwhile um, swap out. I mean, I hate using other parts on different vehicles, but you can see the shock mounting positions are exactly the same. The length, exact, the cutout here is a little bit different, but that doesn't matter, it's not, there's nothing that needs to clear, it's there. The um, sway bar mount is in the exact same location. So yeah, they are exact, um, they just changed the mold a little bit, did them a little different. I think they tried. I think their intention was, let's beef those things up and make them big, but <clears throat> you need a little bit of flexibility. So we got the, the arms all installed, a little flexible. I'm feeling pretty good about those. Um, I think next week thing we're gonna install is a 25949 front and rear anti-roll bar set. So here's, here's what they are. You got the ends, 
the stops for the outsides. Uh, front and rear is exactly the same. You do have to note that down the curve, I would highly recommend checking these for thread lock. They're not gonna hold up very well. Okay, we'll start with the rear here. Get our two millimeter wrench. And we'll get these started in the holes right there. So we're gonna put it in with the curbside down. And we're gonna fish them in like this. They go above the drive shafts. Go ahead and cinch these down. Okay, you don't want them all the way tight. I'm gonna back them up a little bit. There we go. So it, uh, it moves free side to side. I think we're gonna wanna go ahead and set the collars. Okay. All we gotta do is attach the ball ends. Or a flat piece of metal. And we have the rear installed. Nothing's hitting. They are fairly stiff sway bars. They should help quite a bit. Let's go ahead and install the front ones. Okay, and that's that. Sway bars are installed. Really only took a few minutes. Just make sure you check for the thread lock on the ends. Make sure it has some thread lock. Locking servo saver nut, 25950. And the aluminum steering bell crank. These should be pretty cake. So it looks like we need to remove these four screws. Okay, there we go. It cinched down quite a bit, but it still has a little bit of room to move. Okay, so this screw right here on the inside, I thought it'd be easy to change. And it can be if you have a pair of curved that you can get in there just like this, it works perfectly. If not, you might have to lift this bar and pull the bell crank all the way out. Okay, so we got the plastic one out. Oh, let's see how flexible. All right, so here's the aluminum one. Hopefully you don't have any problems with it bending. Um, looks pretty beefy, nice looking piece. Okay, now that you got them both done, there, there's a metal shoulder in there, so you can tighten them up and they still won't uh, be all bound up. Would normally have my little holders on here to hold this in place so it doesn't slide around and clamps the but it's kind of too high for the mount so you can't see through the camera so I just got it sitting on the rubber pads get the thread lock on this one All right, 
right, so the next thing is, is we gotta swap out the radio stuff. Get the lights unplugged. So we're going to get this thing. actually a different day because I had to wait for the tires to get here and it was the longest a main shipment I've ever seen <clears throat> not their fault I guess they had to come from a different warehouse back east but what I ordered for new tires to try is the 11710s and these are 3.8 for the Badlands mounted on raid rims uh, removable wheel hexes 17 millimeter standard issue a lot of people run these I thought these might be a good addition to a good alternative to get a lot better handling. Let's open these up, see what they look like. You got a removable hex, which is nice. So if you strip the hex, just replace the hex, you're done. What I want to do is compare them. Here's the stuck tires. They have a real um, soft sidewall extremely soft compound these tires balloon like crazy and they make the actual handling a lot more difficult for driving especially on 6s so i ordered these um, you can see that they're the same height might even be a little bit shorter on the badlands just a little bit not going to make much of a difference um, but the biggest thing is the width you can see the width is a lot narrower which is what i was looking for and I was checking the offset and everything with my uh, calipers and stuff. And it looks like they're going to sit the same width on the outside of the vehicle. We're just going to lose, we're going to lose this little bit of width on the inside, which is fine. These, these, I like these tires, but they're too much for success. They're, I mean, they're too soft for success. Um, they're just way too, they balloon like crazy. I do like the tread pattern. I think they would be great on 4S truck, which is what I've been running this on mostly. You can also see here's a comparison to, I run these on the Skeeter. These are a low profile uh, trencher, 3.8. And they're considered LPs. And they are just a little bit, Maybe. They look about the same height, so I think the Badlands might have them just by a little bit. Not much. We're looking at the same width. Actually, I think the Badlands are slightly narrower. And we're going to try these here. Um, if I don't like these on this truck, we're going to go ahead and we'll swap out the, the trenchers off the Skeeter and do some swapping around. But let's get these mounted up. So if they come with removable hexes and all the hardware. And let's get them mounted. Do a brief recap. Wheels and tires, steering link, locking aluminum servo nut, uh, Reedy high torque servo, all aluminum. Um, we did front and rear sway bars. We have also installed the previous to this video a long time ago. We did this dual fan setup. This is a Power Hobbies setup. And for 20 bucks, you almost can't beat what this will do for a motor. I've actually ordered a bunch of these, put them on my Creighton. Uh, my Skeeter, uh, my Kronos XTR, and they're working really well. Um, and they're like $20 for this whole setup with the extension, wire extensions. So I recommend it. Um, tuning adjustments, I can't remember. I've tuned the front diff 
I think it's 200,000 in there. Made a difference, I think I need to go higher. Um, and in the rear, I drilled out the rear pistons, and I don't remember exactly what weights, but I can uh, put that in the description. I think the body sits just about right. Pull a fugly body. It's like it's gonna sit nice and low. I like a nice, low, sleek machine. We'll turn on the... That's it for this video. Uh, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more on the MT. Also, got some more house videos coming up and some RC review stuff.